Kevin sits at the edge of the bench so that when he lays down into position, he doesn't bang his head on the barbell. I guarantee you someone's going to bang their head on the barbell today because he didn't listen to that cue. <laughs> He's going to slide back so his head falls off the bench. From this position, he grabs the bar in his preferred grip, which is index finger on the outer ring of a powerlifting bar. That's the maximum legal width grip in a powerlifting competition. But it just so happens that without a powerlifting competition, this is kind of the size of the racks. And if you go wider than that, you're going to jam your fingers in the uprights. Okay, so that is, regardless of whether you're a powerlifter or not, that's the maximum width that I will ever teach you. Okay, if that's too wide for you, which I'm going to teach you how to determine that later, uh, you are welcome to go a little bit closer. But Kevin is very strong, he's very conditioned, that's a comfortable position for him. Index finger on the outer ring of the powerlifting bar. With his head off the bench, that's the start point. The reason why he's that far back is so that he can get his feet far enough back to set up in the position that we want, which is going to be uh, quite far back. Okay? Up on the balls of his feet, from this position, he's going to push his heels downwards. I need you to understand, his heels aren't touching the ground. This is the technique that I teach. It's not a flat foot bench press. His heels aren't touching the ground, but there is downwards pressure through his heels the entire time. With that downwards pressure, he's going to be pushing his heels down and sliding into position. Heels down at the same time. Sliding into position. <clears throat> Using the barbell to slide into position, he ends up with his eye level is behind the bar. Heels down throughout the entire movement. Okay? He then focuses on squeezing his shoulder blades back and down towards the back pocket. Okay? Retraction and depression of the scapula. He's going to hold that position throughout the entire rep from start the entire set, I should say, from start to finish, okay? Heels down, shoulder blades back and down. From here, we take a big breath and hold it, and then we unrack, okay? Pulling the bar to his start position, five reps. Holding his breath the entire movement. Heels down the entire movement. Scaps back and down towards his pockets the entire movement. Notice he's not just dropping the bar on his chest. The way that we teach this is to pull the bar apart. Same as spreading the floor in a, bench, in a squat, pulling the bar apart in a bench press to ensure that he's not just dropping the weight. Okay? He's using his muscles to control the weight to his chest. Okay. Did, stay there, but just relax. Did you see his body's now flat? He's not in that arch position. Okay. Heels down. Okay. We'll lift his chest up. Okay and relax. Any questions? Yes? Can you extend, like, can you arch too much? Like... For, it, it, the, the correct answer to this, I know where you're getting at, the correct answer to this is, it depends. In a competition, as long as his butt is on the bench, his feet are on the ground, his upper back is on the bench, you can't do a bench press without your upper back on the bench, right? So his upper back will be on the bench, but his butt on the bench, his feet on the floor, you can arch as much as you want. You can have an arch this high and bench press one centimeter, if you have that mobility. That's legal, and that doesn't make him a if he's able to achieve that. But if all I do is train that movement exclusively with Kevin, the range of, no of motion is not big enough to strengthen his body. So with someone with an arch as good as Kevin, we would include other accessory exercises that strengthen the joint, the shoulder joint, through the ranges of motion that we're unable to achieve with the bench press movement. Okay, so if he wasn't arching as well as what he was, he would have a, less, a, a longer range of motion, okay, which technically would be able to build a little bit more muscle mass than the shorter lever technique that we're teaching. But that's not all Kevin does. Uh, in fact, uh, I don't know if it was, I don't think it was just for this uh, seminar, but uh, last week he did how many kilo dumbbell press? Uh, 70 kilo. For how many reps? Eight. 70 kilo dumbbell press for eight reps through a full range of motion. The arch doesn't uh, make a difference to the range of motion in a dumbbell press because bringing the chest up doesn't touch the dumbbells. It touches a barbell. So we use other exercises as supplementary movements for someone like Kevin. Like if, if Kevin is my athlete, uh, he doesn't just bench press. Okay, he has a higher focus on other exercises. That's our favorite um, exercise to complement the bench press when we're talking about shoulder health, taking the joint through its full range of motion. Okay, is a dumbbell press with a neutral grip on all angles. So upright, 
incline flat, he does a lot of that as well. So he's actually strong and very technical with his movement. We need both, okay? Strength in strength competition is very specific. If you're not a powerlifter, uh, if you arched like that, um, I'd say, that's a pretty cool trick. Do you want to do that for fun? Like, we can keep doing that and, and you know, uh, you can be a badass with a cool bench press. Like, it's a cool thing. It's a sport. Like, th think of it as a sport. You know, some people out there play team sports for fitness, not because they're going to be professional one day, okay? Some people do it for fitness and for health and for, for feeling great about themselves, okay? So bench pressing is a sport even if you don't compete professionally, okay? So if you came to me, didn't have an interest on being a powerlifter, you could still have a goal of having a great bench press. If you had an arch like that, I'd promote it and I'd say, fuck yeah, keep going. Like, let's get you 140 kilo bench press with that arch. What am I gonna do in the background? I'm still gonna train your upper body for structural balance, take your short shoulder joint through its full range of motion on all angles, push and pull, okay? Strengthen the external rotators of the shoulder joint and strengthen the stabilizers of the scapula so that the rotator cuff muscles can do their job. Let's do it again, take a seat on the edge of the bench so when he lays down, he doesn't bang his head on the bar. Sliding into position. So his head comes off the bench, grabbing the bar in his desired grip, okay? The wider the grip, the lower the range of motion. Uh, the higher the potential for lifting the heaviest weight possible, okay? Slide it with his feet back up in the balls of his seat, he's gonna push his heels down and keep that downwards pressure throughout the entire movement, sliding into position, which is where his eyeballs will end up behind the bar. Pushing his heels down, pulling his shoulder blades back and down, taking a big breath and Controlling the bar to his start point. Controlling the bar down to his chest, not just dropping it to his chest. He does that by imagining he's pulling the bar apart. And right. The angle of the elbow, let's talk a little bit about this. Okay, has anyone heard of the cue to tuck your elbows? Yeah, does anyone know why we do that? Yeah, it's protect the shoulder. What does protect the shoulder mean? Yeah. Cool, turn around, okay. What we've got, that's the scapula. On the scapula sits our rotator cuff muscles, okay? The bony line here, that's called the spine of the scapula. Above that, there's a muscle, what's that called? Supraspinatus, okay? The supraspinatus comes underneath here, travels under the acromion, and attaches to the top of the humerus. When we abduct our humerus to 90 degrees, we've closed that space between the humerus and the acromion, where that supraspinatus tendon travels through. So now we have two bones rubbing on this muscle, on this tendon. And that's not what that tendon is designed to do, be rubbed on by two bones. So if we tuck the elbows, we're creating more space for that tendon to move through. Does that make sense? So this is, this is one of the parts of tucking the elbows when we say it's designed to protect the shoulder. Okay, now you understand a little bit of the anatomy behind it, okay? The next thing that the lats do, I want you to understand this. When we abduct to 90 degrees and up, we're turning our lats off. Upper traps on, lats off. Okay, so we don't want retraction with upper trapezius. We want retraction with lower trapezius. Okay, because then we can recruit our lats as well, which are going to depress the head of the humerus away from the glenoid fossa. So take this ball out of the socket slightly so that it can move freely and not rub tendons between these two bones. So this is why we tuck the elbow joint. This is tucked, this is tucked, this is tucked. Okay, to say 45 degrees, like, it depends. Does that make sense? I don't teach flared elbows, and I don't usually give the cue of tucking the elbows. A lot of people come to me and bench press here. Okay, this is in the position where we can recruit our strongest pushing muscles possible. This becomes a powerful tricep exercise. I don't want this to be a tricep exercise. I don't want it to be a pec exercise. I want it to be the most comfortable pushing exercise that we have, okay? So a lot of the cues that exist, you may not hear me say, especially if the lifter is already doing it. Some lifters start here and I give them the cue, flare the elbows. What text will you ever read anywhere in the world 
that says that flared elbows is the right technique for bench press. It doesn't exist. And I would not write a book that said that either. It doesn't exist. But you may hear me teach my lifter who presses here to flare his elbows. Does that make sense? Not because I want him to be at 90 degrees abduction of his shoulder joint. Okay, because that's going to impinge. I'm going to talk about forced couple relationships. Lay down. Get in the arch position. And just stay there for a little bit. Okay, let's start from the feet and go all the way up to the hands. His feet are back, he's pushing his heels down. What action is this at the hip joint? Okay, relax, <coughs> chest drops. Extension of the, the hip joint creates what at the pelvis? Anterior pelvic tilt. What's the relationship between anterior pelvic tilt and the lumbar spine? Extension of the spine. Okay, I want, relax. I want you guys to arch your back, please. Just sit down and just arch the shit out of your back. Where did your shoulder blades go? Did I tell you to do that or did it just happen? Okay, so this is me getting his feet to talk to his shoulder blades right now. So extension of the back, extension of the thoracic is paired with retraction and depression of the scapula. Now, in a sport like martial arts, throwing sports, okay, the force cup relationship with this movement, okay, is protraction and elevation of the scapula. Does that make sense? So that's... So in a row, retract the press, push, protract, elevate. So scapula goes up here in a press or a punch or a throw, okay, and it comes back and down or retracts in the press in a, in a pulling movement. That's called human movement. He's not throwing a ball, he's not throwing a punch. He's lifting a heavy object off his chest with a board jamming his scapula out of position. So this is where we say we've got anatomy, we've got biomechanics, we've got human movement, and then we got all of that combined with lifting a heavy weight, having a heavy barbell in your hands. Okay? His, so correct human movement would say at the end of the bench press, he should be protracting and elevating his scapula. Okay, do that. You just bench press and just protract and elevate your scapula. Just to go, get, get in the normal setup, unrack it. Okay, bring it down normally, perfectly. Now, press and protract and, and okay. This is the, com the most common error that we see in bench press, and this is shoulder um, injury waiting to happen. Okay, from this position, 60 kilos, he's okay. From his, just try and load the bar down to your chest. Okay, his scapula's out of position. Look at the range of motion that we've done. Okay, take it off. I don't even like watching that. Okay, the risk of injury of that for 60 kilos for someone as strong as Kevin is very low because he's strong enough. Okay, you get a heavy weight and you get him to protract his scapula like that, the risk of injury is incredibly high. It's all relative. Okay, what happens is the protraction and elevation of the scapula now with the heavy weight in the hands has a board jamming his scapula out of position. He will never be able to retract in the press to the exact position when the barbell's on his chest that the scapula's supposed to be at. So his scapula is going to be jammed out of position while he brings the bar down to his chest. So this is the movement we're going to get. We're going to get impingement of the shoulder joint. Okay? This is why, because we have a board jamming the scapula out of position, this is why we need to set up from start to finish with the scapula in the safest position throughout, even though it's not human movement. Okay? Put your arms out in front of you. Okay? You're protracted and elevated because that's human movement. Retract and depress. Good, so when you're retracted the press, so just as extension of the, thumb, of the thoracic spine is paired with retraction of the depression of the scapula, vice versa is also true. Okay, so I got you to retract and depress your scapula and you extend your thoracic spine. Yeah? Okay, so, so they go hand in hand. Okay? Now, do, do that again. Here's homework for you. Uh, I gave you the homework last night. I don't know if you did it. Okay? Retract the press your scapula. Maintain that position. Keep it there and pretend that you're bench pressing. Don't let the scapulas protract one millimetre. Okay, I'm not teaching you how to bench press 60 kilograms. I'm teaching you how to rep out double body weight. Okay, if you want to rep out double body weight or have the highest potential for your bench press or for any of your movements which I teach you, okay, 1% matters. Okay? So we're aiming to reduce the range of motion on an exercise like this where there's a board jamming his scapula in an unsafe position. If I got you to do another exercise like um, a push-up, a dip, 
Okay, dumbbell press. I like that full movement of the scapula. Okay, push-ups where you protract at the end. Okay, dips where you protract at the end. Okay, I like that. But we don't have a board jamming our scapula out of position with those movements. Okay, and if you take your joints through a full range of movement, uh, thinking that you're doing a good thing for the muscle, you're not, with a bench press, with a board jamming your scaps out of position, you're not doing a good thing for the joint. I still want to get him to go slightly heavier each set so that you can see the difference from an elite bench presser, how it looks from an empty bar all the way through to a top weight. Okay, let's tell him what to do. Stand, stay there. Tell him what to do. Why do we want him on the edge of the bench? So he doesn't bang his head. Okay, great, lay down. Where do I want him to lay? With his head? Off the bench. Why do I want his head off the bench? So he can bring his feet back into position. Okay, stop, come back. Head there. If you start here and bring your feet back into position, you can't get them back far enough. The further back the feet, the greater the extension of the hip joint. Okay? I'm maximizing his range of motion. Sorry, minimizing his range of motion. Okay? I'm taking his body through its full range of motion. Okay? By bringing his feet back as far as they can go to maximize his arch. Okay? Slide back so your head's off the bench. Bring your feet back so that what? On your balls of your feet. Good. Get up on the balls of your feet and then push the heels down. Are they going to touch the ground? So what does heels down mean? Extension of the hip joint. Great. So I want downwards pressure of the heels throughout the entire movement to create the extension of the hip joint. As hard as possible. Okay. Good. Pushing the heels down. Now what? He's going to slide into position so... His eyes are just behind the bar. Great. Why do I want his eyes just behind the bar? What's the variation of, of something that you may have learnt or something you may teach? Where, where do we line up? Eyes under the bar. Okay. Why eyes under the bar? That's why I say eyes behind the bar because I don't want to move that far to unrack it. But most people, it's kind of like a logical landmark to have the eyes under the bar. Yeah, okay, the head's there. I want to bring it the bar out of that squat rack, out of that uh, bench press rack, without bumping onto, on uh, the uprights. Okay, so we want to be far down here enough so, so this doesn't get in our way. If you're a novice lifter, okay, some novice lifters may, may need to be all the way down here. Kevin's an advanced lifter. I want him to move as little as possible with his unrack. Okay, why? Why do I want him to move as little as possible with his unrack? Relax. Say that again. Maximize efficiency. Great. So, why would that... So, the answer that she just gave was it doesn't pull the scaps out of position. Why would being down here pull the scaps out of position? Because you have to reach further. So, reaching further, like a punch or a throw, does what to the scapula? Elevates and protracts the scapula. What happens when we elevate, protract the scapula, put a heavy load in our hands, and then try and retract and, de and depress the scapula? We ain't getting it. it. Not necessarily injury. We won't go that far, but it's potential for injury, but we're not going to be able to set our scapula in the right position because you've got a board jamming them out of position. So while we are unloaded, we need to jam our scapula in position. Okay? Slide back. So his head's off the bench so he can get his feet in the right position. Up on the balls of his feet, he's got to push his heels down and maintain that downwards pressure throughout the entire movement from now. They're not allowed to lift up. Good. Heels down, slides down until his eyes are behind the bar so that he doesn't have to travel so far to unrack that weight. Come. Heels down. Okay. Now what? Not yet. Scaps, what? What are we telling him to do? Retract and depress his scapula. Okay. Pull your shoulder blades back and down towards the back pocket. Okay. Heels down, scaps back and down. Take a big breath. Pulling the bar apart. He's holding his breath the whole time. He's controlling that weight to his chest. He'll just give me four reps. <clears throat> Touching his chest, under control, and powering that weight back up. Okay, look at the speed on the way up. Good. He's not uncontrollably exploding that weight up.
which is something that I see a lot of, and I'm sure I'm going to see it today, even though I said it now. Okay? One of the com most common errors that I see is people punching it so hard because they're training to be explosive, which is a fantastic idea. Okay? Not if it's going to interfere with your achieving perfect position. Okay? Position, precision, technique, tension. Then we add speed. 